From the first moment you look at it, you can tell that this keyboard was designed... I caught that. This is a gaming keyboard that doesn't look like a gaming keyboard, but is it actually any good? Let's find out. From the first moment you look at it, you can tell that the Logitech G413 was designed to be simple and elegant. It comes in two colors, primarily a black with red backlit keys and a silver with white backlit keys. It has minimal branding. There's really no branding at all, actually, except for a G in the upper right-hand corner of the keyboard. The G, of course, uh, meaning that this peripheral is part of their gaming series of products. The keyboard is made from very high-end materials. There's virtually no flex whatsoever. That comes primarily to, due to the fact that there's a brushed aluminum backplate uh, behind the keys, and the plastics that they do use on the keyboard are extremely rigid and nice to the touch. It's definitely not a cheap feeling keyboard. So what's so great about this keyboard? Well, for $90, it's actually packed full of a lot of great features. First of all, it is a full-size keyboard with a number pad, and although it's a full-size keyboard, it really doesn't take up a very large footprint. That was the first thing I noticed when I switched over to this one temporarily for this review, as opposed to my daily driver that I use, which is the KM780 by G-Skill. The G-Skill keyboard absolutely dwarfs the Logitech keyboard by comparison, and this is mostly due to the fact that it has a lot of gaming styling cues uh, that give that away, whereas the Logitech keyboard has a much smoother fit and finish. I, I guess you could say there's nothing exciting about it on the surface, which you could argue is actually what makes it so attractive. The keys are backlit, and it's a very nice, even, and bright backlight on each of the individual keys. And that's because these don't use traditional Cherry MX keys, they use Logitech's own Romer G switches. These Romer G switches are created in a way that allow the light to come from the center of the key, which allows for a brighter and more evenly distributed illumination of the keys, which is really nice. It makes the keyboard look much more high-end than it actually is. And the switches themselves are actually very good. As I mentioned, they are made by Logitech specifically for their keyboards. And by comparison, you would most likely compare these switches to something like a Cherry MX Red. There's definitely less travel distance, it feels like. It's also, even though it says that it uses 45 grams of force, to provide an actuation. For some reason, it feels like more on the Logitech. I feel like I have to exert a little bit more force. It took a little bit of getting used to. It's not necessarily something negative, but it is a little bit of a difference between the two switches. There's also a little bit of a cushion, I feel like, when you depress the Logitech key and it bottoms out. It's actually a little bit of a cushion. I don't know if that's designed that way on purpose. Uh, some people might like that. Other people I know like the more clicky, tactile feel. Um, I could go either way. And because it's a little more of a soft impact when you bottom out the key, it's actually quieter too. And don't think for a minute that they're any less durable than the German-made Cherry MX switches. These will last for 20 million key presses. To put that number in perspective, that is a key press once a second for eight hours a day for two years. That's another reason why people go with mechanical keyboards is that they're extremely durable. So this is a true mechanical keyboard, it just doesn't use traditional Cherry MX switches. In a way that this Logitech is comparable to my existing G-Skill computer is the inclusion of additional keys and a key puller. Now this key puller is used to pull off the existing keys and replace them with some that have a little bit more texture on them. As you can see, the difference between these two keys isn't super noticeable, but your fingers do definitely uh, feel the difference. And I guess technically they kind of help with keeping your fingers planted. However, they're not nearly as intense as the slope that you'll find on the additional keys included with my G-Skill keyboard. And this will really come down to personal taste, but when you're using it, that's when you feel the difference, which is nice. It definitely adds to the more elegant style of the keyboard. And using the keyboard puller, they can be swapped out in a snap. Another great feature about this keyboard is the inclusion of a USB 2.0 port on the rear of the keyboard. This allows you to more easily plug in, you know, maybe a USB 2.0 thumb drive or a microphone uh, or charge your phone. You know, something like that you can use this port for. I wouldn't recommend using this for something that needs a little bit higher bandwidth. 
And finally, this last feature isn't necessarily unique to the keyboard, but it is unique to Logitech. The, Logitech is no stranger to this proprietary software for their devices. It's all one program. So when you open up the program, you will see all your Logitech devices listed. If you have a, log, if you have a wired or wireless mouse plugged in, if you have a webcam plugged in or a keyboard, in one simple interface, you can move through all your peripherals, your Logitech peripherals. The keyboard, I was really impressed by all the things you can do. You can create a heat map of your most commonly used keys. You can also separate that into how long you press the keys, you know, key press duration. And you can also set profiles to the keyboard. But not only that, it will find what games you have on your machine that there already exist profiles for. I really didn't get into all of that, but for those out there that really want to customize their keyboard, this is definitely the software to do it, and you're only going to get that if you buy a Logitech keyboard. So it's not unique to this keyboard, but you can use that software with this keyboard. You can't modify uh, the colors, but you can modify the brightness and also the effects of the lighting. I was pleasantly surprised at how much, how much it can do for you know a simple mechanical keyboard. So everything's good, right? I mean. $90 and you get a great mechanical keyboard? What's wrong with it? Well, there are a few compromises you have to make here. First of all, it is not RGB. Again, if you buy the silver version with the aluminum backplate, the keys are illuminated white, although I would argue they have a little bit of a blue tint to them. And if you buy the black keyboard, they're illuminated red. You have no option uh, to modify the colors on the backlighting of the keys. You can, however, modify their intensity uh, again, through the software, there are no dedicated media keys. Now, you can use the function keys on, on the Logitech keyboard to perform this, but on a larger, uh, more expensive keyboard, those media functions have their own dedicated buttons. There are also no dedicated macro buttons. A lot of times, keyboards will have a row of macro keys to the left side where you can map those keys to do certain things. It does not have any dedicated macro buttons, but again, you can modify what the key strokes do by going into the Logitech software. There's also no wrist rest on this keyboard. At first, didn't really understand the point of the wrist rest, but now going to a keyboard that doesn't have it, I definitely miss it. This is the first keyboard I've used since I've gotten my G skill that has actually made me kind of jealous. So in conclusion, the Logitech G413 has it where it counts. If you want a good mechanical keyboard, a very good mechanical keyboard with nothing fancy, no RGB lighting, no dedicated media keys, no nonsense, and you want to not take up a ton of space on your desk, and you want to make sure it's going to last forever and look great, this is a terrific option. So yeah, I'm a fan. Take from that what you will. You can find links to Logitech's products in the video description below, including this particular keyboard and where to find it on Amazon. I do highly recommend it. It's a great keyboard for the price. If you want to see other video reviews from us, go ahead and check those out here. Subscribe so you can see when new videos drop, including other reviews. I have a review coming out soon of one of Logitech's uh, most popular gaming mice. So we're excited to get that out to you. But thanks again for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.